Good morning, Mount Olive. Uh, it's a wonderful day. Uh, the Lord's been blessing us to, to get up, put our feet on the ground. And uh, before we get started with our devotion this morning, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings, Father. Well, most of those we probably don't even know, Father, that you've protected us, that you've watched over us, Father. We ask, Lord, that you'll be with us today. Bless everything we do this weekend. Bless our services. Lord, that your name will be uplifted and not ours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and start into our devotion this morning. Uh, we'll go ahead and share our screen uh, and get everything uh, everything going. Uh, this is the devotions for uh, Third John this morning. Uh, everyone has done a great job. This has been a great study going through First John and the brothers going through Second John. We'll be starting Third John today, and as a part of Third John, uh, John is basically writing a letter to one particular person, uh, and he is bringing out the lessons of truth and hospitality. What does it mean to be a follower of Christ and have the truth in you, work toward His name, and what does it mean to actually show? Uh, what it is to be a hospitality um, church, one that gives uh, the feet and hands of Jesus actual movement. And, and we'll be seeing a lot of things here in the first few verses of, of Third John. And most of it will be toward the hospitable Gaius. Now, Gaius is who the letter is written to. And John starts out very, uh, very quickly uh, into his letter with Gaius. But basically, he is a person that we really don't know a lot about. Uh, we know that he was a, a good follower of Christ. He was in a church that uh, may not have been very uh, open to, to John and what he would like to give as direction. But Gaius, basically, uh, his works and his uh, hospitality had made it back to John through the ministers that have come through. And basically, uh, John is, is writing him to encourage him to uh, give him uh, a time to pat him on the back, basically, and not to, to be flattering, but to basically encourage him. So we'll start with uh, 3 John, there's only one chapter, and we'll start with the first verse. It says, the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in health, even as thy soul prosper. So John basically laying out in the first verse that I am the elder. He's not really saying John. This is John. He says, uh, the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. I love as a brother in Christ. And basically in this, John is giving uh, uh, an introduction to um, how this letter is going to go. Uh, so calling somebody a well-beloved brother. Um, is one that uh, is not going to be a chastising, but basically it's going to uplift Gaius. And you can imagine him reading this, that basically he is already uh, feeling good about this letter as he, as he opens it. Uh, John is the elder, and Gaius is going to be one of three unknown people that we will be reading about in Third John. But we do know one thing about Gaius, is that he had a great testimony among the church. Uh, even as these early churches have been established, ministers that come and go and travel between ch uh, churches, his reputation has made it back to John, that John knows that Gaius is, is doing a good thing. John's prayer to Gaius is really kind of an outline that every Christian's prayer should be for each other. Uh, in those verses, he states that thou mayest prosper. In other words, John is praying that for his overall welfare of Gaius, that he would uh, in everything that he does, that your overall welfare financially uh, with your family, within the church, that your overall welfare may prosper. John also says that he uh, prays that he will be in health. Basically, I pray that uh, each Christian should have bodily welfare, uh, that you will stay, uh, stay well and not be sick, and that thy soul prosper. He actually brings out and says, that I pray that your spiritual welfare will continue to be built as you grow in being a Christian. And these are three things that 
that John, in this one verse, kind of lays out that every Christian should pray, pray for one another on, that we have each of these three things, that we say that your life is good, that you stay in good health, and that you continue to grow in the knowledge of Christ. Um, we go on into verse 3. Verse 3 says, For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in truth. Notice that I've got to in thee in red, uh, testified of the truth that he is a Christian, that the truth or gospel or Jesus Christ, the spirit of God is in thee, even as thou walkest, that even in your walk as being a Christian, that the brethren have come and testified of not only you being a Christian, but the way that you hold yourself, the way you go throughout your life day in, day out even as thou walkest in the truth, that word has come back to me. And did he say that, nah, it came back, it was okay? Uh, no, he says, for I rejoice greatly. And in, in verse four, he says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Uh, and in this area, I think John is saying, you know, I have I've established churches, I have uh, talked to different people, I have been working in the ministry, and it feels so good to see those that I have taught, brought to uh, know Christ as their personal Savior, uh, take up their own Christian life and to walk forward. Uh, being in youth and being in a lot of classes, uh, I've had the opportunity to teach a lot of youth at one point. And it's good to see some of those youth grow up, start families, even begin their own Christian life, teaching others um, the way into being a Christian how to uh, give the gospel out and, and to be that person. And it is a great joy to see, excuse me, to see that. Uh, these are commendations that John had heard of Gaius. Uh, this was not to flatter him, not to say, hey, you're doing a great job, keep it up, bro. Uh, not to uh, just be this uh, superficial, I guess is the word. Uh, but actually give him honor and encourage him. Uh, we'll find out in other verses that uh, Gaius may be part of a church that might not be so welcoming, but his hospitality has been. Uh, Gaius is not just the believing of the facts of the gospel, that Christ died for his sins and him accepting that. But he's, ex he's exhibiting the Christian life and the hospitality in his everyday life. And that's what John has heard. We're going to go ahead and go on into verse 5 and 6 says, uh, Beloved, thou dost faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. Seven says, Because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such, that we might be fellow helpers of the truth. Now, John, in these four verses, is basically laying out uh, the things that have kind of come back from the ministers that have visited Gaius' church. It says that thou art faithfully doing whatever you can to the brethren and to strangers, that you have borne witness of thy charity, charity, love, before the church, that you bring forward uh, to their journey, to the minister's journey, and that you supported them so they should do well. And why should he do this? Because for his namesake, for Christ's namesake, those ministers went forth. And in eight, it says, we therefore ought to receive such. We might be fellow helpers. Why do we show the hospitality to these traveling ministers that have come through your church? Why have you shown the hospitality, Gaius? Is the way we may be fellow helpers. And here's John's instructions to us and to Gaius as, uh, as this lesson is on showing hospitality is we need to continue to support your brothers, even if they're strangers, that Jaius has been showing and being the hands and feet of Jesus. As these people, these ministers come back, some that he may have known as brothers in Christ, some are strangers to him, but he has accepted both of them in the hospitality. And the word has gotten back to John about Jaius' service, that he has actually taken uh, this to heart. Um, and basically out of this, John is giving four questions for the church. He says, what should we do? 
Well, what is we ought to support such ministers that have come through that ask for our support. Um, and this is what Gaius had done. These ministers have come to preach, to share the gospel, and they have been given food, shelter, and support uh, while they are there. How should we do that? It says that we should do it in a manner worthy of God. In uh, in verse six, it says, which have borne witnesses of thy charity before the church, it, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly short, sort, they, thou shalt do well. In other words, if we should do it as in if Christ had been there, if God had been there after a godly sort, then that is what we should do. That should do well. Uh, do it in such a manner that we were uh, giving hospitality to God himself. Uh, why should we do that? Because they are set out to proclaim the gospel. They are the ones who have uh, taken on this mantle to spread the gospel because they have uh, taken that up. We need to be a support system. Uh, we need to be there. So, so what should we do then? In doing so, we become co-workers in the gospel with these ministers, that we become uh, partners in what God has in store for the work that these ministers have done. And, and this is good questions uh, that we should ask ourselves anytime uh, that we see ministers come and go uh, that may need help, that we have done in missions work, uh, those that we see that we reach out and uh, I'm so pleased to see all of the people that have come and given their testimony after mission uh, trips where they have actually been the hands and feet of Jesus. And here's what Gaius has actually been uh, commended for is not only believing in Christ and being a follower of Christ, but he is putting that to work. Uh, in his own little church, he is being a person that welcomes the new ministers, shows them hospitality, takes care of them because he can be a co-worker in the gospel. Hope you've gotten something out of that. Hope you have a great Friday. Uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, on Sunday morning. Have a great day.